Welcome to the Bible Forum. It's Sunday night, April 5th, and it is the Sunday before Easter. There's a new study out. The study says God is out, self is in. The American World View Inventory 2020 is a premier survey of an annual report conducted by George Barna of the newly launched Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University. According to the Christian Post, quote, the survey asked 51 worldview questions that examine both what people believe and how they conduct their lives. The survey found that approximately one-fifth, 20% of all people who regularly attend evangelical Protestant churches hold to a worldview. The actual number is 21%. Think about that. These are people who make a claim of being a Bible Christian. Only 21% of them look at the world the way the Bible does. 16% of those who attend charismatic and or Pentecostal churches believe the world is the way the Bible says it is. Now, my first response is to view these so-called evangelical Protestant churches as mainline, mainline Protestant churches, which are all liberal. They don't believe the Bible at all. But that'd be wrong. Because according to the same survey, only 8% of mainline Protestant churches and 1% of, Catholic of Catholics hold these same views. Think about it. Only 20 out of 100 people in evangelical churches believe the Bible says, believe what the Bible says about life and godliness. Far less than half that number in mainline Protestantism and Catholicism believe what the Bible says about life and about godliness. Keep in mind that what you see on television and online of the large churches, the praise bands, the orchestras, the glitz, those are not evangelical Protestant churches. They're charismatic churches. Or as in the case of Lakewood Church in, in Texas, churches that revolve around a dynamic personality, in that case, Joel Osteen. And I say that because there's 52,000 people attend that church every week. And there's nowhere in the Bible that would describe a church that size. And in the description of the church, the word evangelical doesn't come up. Communion is offered at Lakeside in a small room near a bookstore, if anybody's interested. Communion is not a form of collective worship for Joel Osteen's church. Several women are listed as preachers and teachers in meetings held throughout the week, some of that in direct opposition to the clear teaching of the Bible. At least five separate meetings are offered for various age groups and or purposes, children, young adults, and so forth. They're not part of that larger meeting. So they don't go to church. They don't go to worship. They go to learn, to play, to do other things. And this church spends an estimated $30 million a year just on broadcasting. And they never ask for money. They are given kudos for never asking for money. But the truth is, they're so popular they don't need it. <laughs> According to the survey, it's called Born Again Christians. No. According to the survey, the classification called Born Again Christians, 
are defined by their, quote, acceptance of scriptural exhortations regarding sin, grace, and salvation. Things that Joel Osteen doesn't understand at all. The survey found that born-again Christians were three times more likely to have a biblical worldview than the average. But that percentage was still only 19%. Nonetheless, the report asserts that this, with less than one-fifth of the born-again adults holding a biblical worldview, that this represents a, quote, extensive decline of core Christian principles in America <clears throat> over the last several decades. A second category are so-called notional Christians. See, we keep creating these new classes of Christians. These notional Christians represent the largest segment of people who profess Christ. Notional Christians. They're Christians. They go to church when they can. They do what they have to do or when they want to do, but they don't share any commitment. These folks do not admit to a personal relationship with God. And they make up 54% of the U.S. population. Only one-tenth or one percent of these so-called notional Christians holds a biblical world view. So what's a biblical worldview? Well, it's a view of the world that matches what the Bible teaches. That God created this world, this universe, Genesis 1-1. That all this was created to demonstrate the character, the purpose of God. What about me? Acting out the realities of God's mercy, grace, long-suffering, justice, love. And that the best life is one lived according to those values. In a survey that included about 2,000 adults, Barna notes the decrease in adults holding a biblical worldview from 12% 25 years ago to just 6% today. 6%, the lowest yet. And that values are integrated into one's life as it reflects those beliefs. The report adds that, quote, the societal shift toward non-Christian worldviews like postmodernism, Marxism, secular humanism, modern mysticism, and so forth is most clearly reflected in values, what we hold dear or that we don't. Only 6% of people who are the largest group of people who go to church anytime, anywhere, only 6% of them would hold those values. Alluding to prior research, Barna elaborates saying, quote, the dominant values in the United States today are acceptance, comfort, control, entertainment, entitlement, experiences, expression, freedom, and happiness. These current values ultimately demonstrate a shift in the moral landscape, quote, from previous eras in which a more widely accepted biblical worldview yielded civic duty, hard work, humility, faith, family, moderation, and the rule of law. Tracy Munsell, CCU Executive Director, no idea what CCU stands for. Article doesn't tell us. As well as an associate professor of political science at Arizona Christian Universe, University warns, quote, unless America experiences a steady increase in people reflecting a biblical worldview in their lives, America's future is more likely to resemble that of nations characterized by moral and behavioral chaos. Alternative perspectives such as postmodernism, Marxism, secular humanism are what drive American thinking and lifestyle today. What we experience in our nation today will not change until we replace the cause of the prevalent thinking and behavior. That cause is our worldview. So, what's your worldview? How'd you get it? 
How does anybody get a world view? Is the world you live in one that God created and which has subsequently been diminished by sinful behavior? If you think that's about it, yes, then you have a biblical worldview on this subject. Or is it an ever-increasing technical world where more and more wonderful things are being added? That's the humanistic worldview. The values are there. One view beholds the obvious and superficial benefits and thinks all is well. The other considers God and how far we've come away from him and thinks, how long can this last? And what can I do to stay grounded and balanced and maybe be a help? The best life is one lived according to the realities of God's mercy, grace, long-suffering, justice, and love. The normal life today is one lived for self, ease, enjoyment, satisfaction, wealth, and pleasure. One clearly leads to God, satisfaction, and peace. The other can lead you almost anywhere, except toward God satisfaction and or peace and our world is reflective of our views meaning we tend to act out any way possible except regarding God the majority view is totally secular godless and our social, political, financial, spiritual values demonstrate that reality every day in every way. Look around. What about you? While we're looking around, we need to look inside. What are we doing? I think about it just driving down the road. And I think of all these crazy people on the highway and the things they're doing. And every once in a while I think, what about me? In those pressure moments when I just really have to get across that street or I really want to get over into that lane, am I like those people? Or is there something different about me? You're watching me on this video, you know one thing about me already. I'm old. I've been around a while and I've learned that you can go 10 miles as fast as humanly possible or you can do it in a decent orderly way and the time distance isn't enough to matter. Two minutes maybe? Maybe. But sometimes wisdom isn't what it takes. <laughs> we it's time to put the wisdom in the back seat and we drive. Think about it. How do you live your life? Is it different than anybody else's? And perhaps your heart isn't either. 